What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Happy Thursday, or whatever day you listen to it, because I know uh, not everybody listens on the day it comes out. So hopefully you're having a good day, good week, whenever it is you're, uh, you're stopping by and listening. Um, but yeah, it's a, another Thursday morning here, and... Uh, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I've been. I've been struggling to get out to play a little golf. Um, I'll get into it more before we get into today's show. I want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and the Pro V series of golf balls. We all have different ability levels and goals, but one thing we share is a desire to bring our best every time we tee it up. And it all starts with choosing a golf ball you can trust. The Pro V One is the best combination of speed, spin, and feel in the game, and the X gives you a higher flight and firmer feel. Both deliver long distance, consistent flight, soft feel, and all important drop and stop greenside control. So whether you're Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, or Nelly Korda competing at the, the highest level, or simply striving to be the best you can be, tee up a Pro V1 or Pro V1X and always bring your best. So go to Titleist.com, check out the Pro V1, Pro V1X, uh, see which one's best for you. I have been uh, Kind of rocking a little bit of both this year. I uh, I was kind of playing majority of the Pro V1, and then uh, I had a box of Pro V1Xs that I, I kind of found uh, in one of my drawers over my shop, and I was like, oh man, I haven't played the X in a little bit, and uh, and took that out and played. So uh, and, and enjoyed it. I kind of like the high uh, high ball flight of that thing, and uh, yeah. So been uh, been a busy couple weeks. Last weekend I was in Chicago, so no golf. Uh, unfortunately, by uh, you know by the time you drive out there, which from Detroit, if you're not familiar. Uh, from Metro Detroit, driving to Chicago is about four and a half hours. Broke it up on, uh, on on Thursday night. I didn't unfortunately wasn't able to play golf. Took off, spent the night in cold water at my parents' place, and then uh, you know spent the, uh, went in for the last uh, two hours of the drive or whatever it is. So kind of broke it up, and uh, it was way nice. I think it was easier on the little girl, and uh, but had a good time. Saw some uh, some friends we hadn't seen in a while, and uh, then you know powered back on Sunday to make sure we were back for uh, uh, for Halloween and for uh, my daughter's school. So powered back on, on Sunday, didn't get home till like, I don't know, 8.30, quarter to 9, something like that. Um, one of the toll booths was brutal. It was like a 20-minute wait. Uh, and then, uh, you know, of course, with a little girl, you got you know, we had to stop for gas, and then we had to stop for food, and, you know, it was just one of those things. But she was really good. She was really good in the car, so... Um, but yeah, so I haven't uh, been playing as much as I'd like to. Uh, I'm hopefully going to go out and play tonight. We'll see. Um, I went to the range yesterday. Uh, was was pounding some balls, which was uh, which was a blast. I, I love the range, and uh, unfortunately, I just don't get there much anymore. Um, I guess anybody who anybody who's kind of a parent kind of understands that uh, you go to work all day, and especially if you're your you know your your spouse or partner's at home with kids you know you get home and you know then gonna run out to the range and that doesn't always fly <laughs> it doesn't always work well and um, I've said it a million times my wife is an absolute saint when it comes to golf uh, the crap she puts up with from me from uh, whether it's golf equipment or playing or just talking about golf or people texting me about golf or whatever um, you know she's an absolute saint and, and puts up with way more crap of mine than she needs to um, which is why part of the reason why I love her and part of the reason why I married her but um, so I don't get to the range a whole lot, but uh, I kind of said, "Hey, I gotta go. I got a lot of stuff to hit." So uh, I was there uh, for a while, hit a bit, you know, hit the bucket, had the full swing launch monitor, took some notes, uh, got some notes in my notebook here uh, from hitting balls uh, yeah, today as well. But uh, yeah, I've been hitting a few things, and I'm kind of gonna split it up into two shows because I was hitting, hitting some irons, hitting some woods, hitting some shafts, uh, a little bit of everything. Um, I do have to say, I did a little swap of shafts uh, in the three wood I know the three wood as, as most of you know I don't need to probably repeat it much more uh, I've been on that three wood hunt you know for basically a year and a half two years trying to find something that I absolutely love that just has that stupid confidence that when you step up to the tee whatever you know you can hit it well you know you're going to hit it well and it just you know it, it's kind of that magical uh, club and I had it in a 2016 XR16, uh, Callaway XR16. If you uh, if you remember, or you've probably heard it a hundred times and don't need to hear it again, <laughs> but um, I've had it. Uh, I had that for a long time with a. Uh, I started out with a Project X Hazardous Red handcrafted uh, 75, and then switched it over when the Ventus Red uh, came out. I actually got one of the prototype uh, Reds that was uh, painted like a blue, but it had uh, the red lettering on it uh, for a Ventus Red, uh, and played that for you know, like three or four years, uh, something like that. And then I'm trying to, I think the Maverick Sub-Zero kind of knocked it out for a little bit. 
uh, and then I reuse that, and then it's just been trying everything. But um, you know, a, a long three wood story, I guess. But uh, I, I recently, you know, when I went out to Titleist, got fit for the TSR uh, TSR two uh, three wood. Uh, when I went there, I got fit for driver three wood, five wood, and um, I've been hitting the three wood a little more. I've been hitting it better and better. Uh, and what I did was, uh, it was kind of a battle between TSR two and a uh, shout out to my boy Johnny Wonder, a tour issue uh, Rogue LS, uh, Rogue ST LS head, uh, which had an adjustable hosel, tour only, a little different shape, um, all that. So those two were kind of the ones that I was, you know, hitting back and forth. Um, so I did a little shaft swap. I had the Ventus, I, I had a Ventus TR Red, put it in the Rogue ST, and I just, I didn't hit it great. Um, when I hit it off the T, it was just bullets, and they went forever. They were low spin bullets. Um, but I couldn't hit it off the turf very well. It just wasn't really consistent. And, and that's kind of my, my struggles to find something that I can hit off the turf reasonably well. And I'm not looking to be able to hit the ultimate three wood off the deck and land it soft into tight pin locations, anything like that. I'm just, if I can hit something reasonably straight and reasonably high in the air, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and the, the Rogue ST, I just was having, struggling with that. Um, so I wanted to put, so that didn't work. So I pulled the, the Ventus, Red the Ventus TR Red out of the LS the geez all the letters uh, the Callaway Rogue ST uh, and I put it in my TSR2 uh, 15 degree head uh, which previously had the Project X Hazardous Black fourth gen which uh, I, I hit pretty well uh, I hit great at uh, TPI Titleist hit pretty good uh, on the course but but not amazing so I put the the the, Vent, the Ventus TR Red uh, in that and then I put the old trusty Fujikura Speeder NX that I had in my Sim 2 Max last year that I pretty much played for most of the year. Took that out, put it in the <laughs> Rogue uh, ST, STLS, um, and kind of took those out. So the Rogue STLS Speeder NX made actually a huge difference. I hit the thing way better. Still pretty low bullets um, off the tee. It's an absolute monster. Um, it, it, it's just like, like Johnny saying when that, when he handed me that head, he's like, you know, with that adjustable hosel, it kind of moves the CG up a little bit, you know, that weight just moved higher up, uh, and that shape and the, and the face, I mean, it just low spin, low bullets, and they just flew. Um, and then I, I could hit it off the turf decent, at least so far. Um, you know, definitely big improvement. So it's the, be the best I've hit it. Uh, and then, uh, the TSR2 off the deck could hit it pretty high um you know off the tee I, it definitely wasn't as long as the the the, the rogue but um hit it pretty darn good and and that was hitting it pretty stupid straight so right now tsr2 still in the lead that the rogue uh stls though that that tour issue thing is definitely a lot closer now like that shaft made uh a huge difference uh in that head but uh Yes, yeah, so a little three wood battle. TSR two still in the lead. I'm excited to uh, hit that TSR two with the 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 TR red in it a little more. It's a seven X, and then that that speeder NX is a is a seventy X as well. So pretty close apples to apples uh, in terms of weight flex, all that. Uh, both fifteen degree heads, but uh, yeah, really improve both heads. So I'm I'm pretty excited to uh, to take those out. Like I said, hopefully uh, a little more tonight and uh, and go play them because uh, out on the course is where it really matters. Range time does help, um, you know, it definitely does, but uh, it is definitely a, um, you know, on the course where it matters, when, it, when you're under pressure, when you have to hit the shot, you only have one shot, you don't have like, you know, a bucket of hundred balls, that's when it really matters, so we'll see how that goes, but I'm excited, I got kind of, like I said, had a little confidence, was excited to hit those, uh, and then, uh, like I said, I was hitting some, uh, a bunch of stuff, I had a bag just full of stuff <laughs> it's like nothing was even close to like a full bag i had like two 60 degree wedges that are both the the t grind and the uh the tailorman high toe three the ones that i've been kind of playing for a little bit um and then like a bunch of mizuno four and seven irons <laughs> pitching wedges um and then i had like a one or two of my pxg gamers in there i mean just a bunch of random stuff so it was pretty uh a pretty interesting session in a sense uh out there on the course or out down the range but, uh, but it was fun. It was a good time. Throw the headphones in. Got the full swing kit, launch monitor going, and just kind of hit balls. So it was uh, it was good. But uh, today, talking about woods 
and I'm going to see, I, so I'm going to split it up because like I said, I've got the Mizuno, uh, JPX 923, uh, hot metal stuff. Uh, the, the Forge and the, and the Tour don't come out until, I believe it's next year, um, so I, I don't have those yet. Uh, but I've got the Hot Metal Pro, Hot Metal, and, uh, and the High Launch. Um, so I'm going to take some, I'm going to talk about those next week. And then uh, this week I've got the PXG 0211 Woods, the new ones, the 2022s. Um, that are kind of the price point clubs that PXG rocks. The, the 0211 line has been pretty popular because it's made to be inexpensive, super forgiving. But now this year the big thing is, you know, they're really focusing on the high quality, you know, the, the titaniums, the steels, all the stuff that they're using in these, which is extreme high quality for a low price and uh, and kind of showing off that. So hit those, and I actually hit them against my Gen 5s uh, that I got fit for uh, out at uh, at PXG. Um, and then I've got the the, the new <clears throat> VA Composites uh, Regine driver and hybrid shaft. So depending how long this episode goes, I'm either going to talk about the VA Composites today or I'm going to talk about them next week. Either way, <laughs> they're, they're here next to me. It just depends on how long this show goes. So we'll play it by ear. But um, yeah, so the, the brand new PXG 0211s, um, which, uh, like I said, the 0211 has kind of been their price point uh, driver, and uh, or woods, irons, all that, and they're kind of a little bit more focused towards the, um, uh, I don't want to say the higher handicap golfer, but they're definitely promoted more as a driver that is meant for someone looking to enjoy the game more. Uh, they're not necessarily built for tour players in a sense. So on the, the biggest things on the sole of this thing, you'll see that there are zero movable weights like the Gen 5 stuff. All titanium head, um, kind of a multi-piece construction. I think the uh, the face and the body are two different titaniums and the big reason is the, the face titanium is a more expensive, more elastic, uh, stronger titanium. They can make it thinner, more ball speed, all that jazz. Um, then the rest of the body is I think an overall stronger uh, titanium. I don't know if it's maybe a little less expensive or what, but the nice thing is they keep the same adjustable hosel uh, as the Gen 5 and, you know, all the other their other drivers. So you still get that adjustability. You can still dial in the driver to uh, to your needs. And then the PXG adapter is pretty good. It's got a lot of settings, um, you know, in, in terms of, of, you know, upright, flat, more loft, less loft, whatever. So the nice thing is they sent it to be built exactly pretty much as the way uh, it was as the Gen 5 driver that I had with a Ventus Blue 6X, which is the legit Ventus Blue with the Velo Core um, <clears throat> 6X, just like my Gen 5. When I got fit for that, I got fit for the uh, in the Ventus Blue uh, 6X. Uh, the only difference was this one is is that they when they glued the shaft, they glued it in the standard position, and I play it in the the PXG low loft position, which uh, basically on the adapter where the PXG logo is, that is. Uh, that is the flat setting, and if you move it towards the lower side, it is the <clears throat> it is minus one degree but flat. So, enable to for me a guy who hits it way left. That's the way uh, I set up my Gen Five. I hit it pretty good, uh, and that's the way I set up set up this one as well. The one thing that I love when you set it in that uh, in that setting is that it looks crazy open <laughs> when you set it down. Uh, this is a twelve degree head. Which is what I, I mean, I don't hit it super high, so a 12 degree head turned down to 11 uh, in that setting and flat, which is kind of a perfect recipe for a guy who, who hits it left. Um, and the, the best thing is, is that it's the same 12 degree head that I hit, the, you know, like I fit into the Gen 5. So um, <clears throat> the nice thing is, too, is that this one here, I didn't take it apart. It's got the PXG adapter and my Gen 5. Uh, I use all fit, but I have a Ventus Blue all fit. So I didn't have to swap shafts, anything. I literally could hit them side by side uh, with the same settings. So both minus one, all that. Um, and I do say the look of the driver is is really good. It, it doesn't have that, you know, doesn't have the carbon fiber crown or doesn't have the carbon fiber uh, crown that the uh, the Gen 5 has. It's got an all matte black uh, head. And, I, and, and it's, it's matte. It's more like a satin because it does have just like a hair of a shine to it. It's not truly 100% matte in my opinion. Um... It is basically like a, uh, um, like I said, more of a kind of a satin finish. You do get a little bit of shine off it, zero glare. Uh, like I said, I was out there hitting today, and it was really sunny, barely clouds in the sky, no problem whatsoever. Um, and then it, 
like I said, compared to its its Gen 5 brother that has the, the kind of the silver carbon, a little cleaner look. Uh, it does have just a little line around the outside and the PXG logo down near the heel. Uh, but overall, the, the shape is very PXG. It's very rounded. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I, I think when you set it down, uh, I feel like I do notice a little more loft uh, in this head uh, than I do the Gen 5. I notice the 12 degrees just a little bit more. Um, but overall, I, I, I like the shape. I you know, it's rounded, but I don't mind that. I kind of like that in a lot of my golf clubs, including even like wedges. I like a little softer look. I don't need it to be crazy edgy or anything like that. Um, and then you've got the little X uh, on the top for uh, the alignment aid. So pretty simple, nothing crazy. Uh, on the bottom, all kind of a polished uh, black chrome in a sense. Um, and again, no movable weights, but you do see some little kind of pads, like three different pads here uh, on the sole that where they're pushing uh, as much weight as possible out to the perimeter uh, of the club to increase MOI, make it super forgiving. Uh, and they do... Uh, and, and like I said, this one here, they're really looking to make it easy to hit, easy to launch, and, uh, you know, for the player who isn't necessarily a, a, a single digit, something that uh, they'll, they'll enjoy hitting and, and will hit relatively straight. Um, but I don't think, you know, in this one here, that, that you'd have a problem, you know, if you're a, you are a single digit. You know, if you're a, a scratch player or a single digit handicap or, you know, a better player, you, will you have a problem hitting this? Not at all. Um... You know, the Gen 5 has the movable weights and some of that stuff, and this doesn't. But, um, you know, they, they do stand up pretty darn well and pretty close to each other. I know <clears throat> with some of the zero two one one stuff previously, people have thought, hey, it's not as good. It doesn't have the ball speed. It doesn't have whatever. Um, I do have to say, this is the first zero two one one driver I think I've hit. Um, I don't remember if I hit the previous Gen uh, version. I might have. Um, but this is, the, you know, like I said, this one here came in exactly my spec, so it was easy to do. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, they built uh, this whole structure that uh, is best supposed to be inside here. Uh, there's a whole structure that's supposed to help with sound and feel, uh, vibration, all that stuff. So uh, in order for it to not sound like a tin can, they've done some internal uh, moving around of some, some weight and some uh, some fins and some structure and whatever <clears throat> to make sure that it, uh, it sounds good. So out there on the course, I'll start first, like I said, look. I think it looks good. No glare off the top, even though it's got just a hair of a shine to it compared to Gen 5. Um, and then the sound and feel on it is actually really good. Uh, I actually kind of prefer the sound of the 0211 over the Gen 5, uh, the 0311 Gen 5. Um, it's a little more muted, a little lower pitched. Uh, it's still, you know, it's, it's still got some sound to it. Um, it it's still there, but it, it's just, it's like I said, a little lower frequency, a little lower pitch, and, and a little more muted. Uh, than the 0311, which which I don't mind. I think that that driver sounds totally fine. This one, honestly, I think sound and feels sounds a little bit better uh, than the 0311. And even on the miss hits, uh, it's just a little bit more quiet. It's not quite as loud. Um, and with both of them, you don't feel a ton of harsh vibration. They're both pretty uh, pretty soft. I do have to say that the 0311, you get a little more um, <clears throat> a little more responsiveness on it. Like when you hit dead center on both drivers you kind of feel the ball compress a little more with the 0311 compared to the 0211 but overall for i mean what's the price on this thing i think it's like i'm like on the website overall for 219 dollars wow like wow 219 dollars right now so as we're speaking right now 219 bucks for this driver that is that's a cons i didn't know it was that cheap it, it was 300 right now it's 219 like that is insane um this thing's <laughs> now knowing how cheap it is um it's a phenomenal deal uh so anyway like i said the, the zero three one one you could you could kind of feel that ball compress a little bit more off the face um you know on dead center shots uh when you get to the outside shots like you definitely know you missed it um it's just not quite as responsive as the zero three one one but uh you know like i said for the the player typically that this is going for that is probably a benefit that they're just you know anywhere you hit it on the face it still feels good it goes out there um, I mean, you can still, I mean, you know you missed it when you hit it on, you know, when you miss the center on the face on this thing. Um, you just don't get quite the audible and vibration sound back, sound feedback that you get with the 0311, in my opinion. Uh, like I said, the first thing I noticed uh, after I hit a handful of shots with this was I, you know, pulled out the 0311, hit it, and <clears throat> the first one I struck kind of like dead center, and I was like, you really, I was like, wow, you could really feel that ball kind of jump off the face and compress. Um... 
but the other thing too is it just goes straight like i was kind of shocked i thought it was going to have a lot of draw bias to it and i and i think it, it probably has more when you set it in more of a neutral loft or more upright loft position setting it low and flat like i said the face is still open so this thing doesn't have a lot of draw it, it definitely um wanted to go straight it was a straight ball flight um, compared to 0311, it probably went a little less, a little more left, um, and, and basically a lot of that was just starting line. You know, this started out either straight or just a hair left, uh, and went that way. Uh, the 0311 XF uh, that I have, sorry, I do have the XF. Um, the XF uh, definitely was a little harder to turn over uh, compared to this, and, and I think, again, part of that 0311 XF has movable weights, and mine, the heavy weights are out in the toe and in the back, so it is like set up as a fade machine. Um, it is much harder to turn over than this 0211. Now the XF, you can probably set it up with the weights in more of a draw position and turn it over pretty easily. But uh, this one here, it was really easy to square up, uh, and it overall kind of had a lighter feel to it as well. Um, I didn't, I haven't pulled them both to see what the head weights are, but just swinging them both lengths the same, 45 inches. The 0211 just felt much lighter. So I don't know if they, maybe the swing weight's slightly lighter, it's got a lighter head weight, whatever. Um, it just felt lighter, uh, and like you could swing it faster, in a sense. The, 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 the 0311 XF, it, it had a little more weight to it throughout the swing. Like You noticed you were swinging two different drivers. It wasn't like exactly the same. <clears throat> but uh, uh, So these two here, uh, like I said, the... <laughs> so, I, so I was hitting them side by side. Uh, so numbers-wise, uh, surprisingly really close in terms of a lot of a lot of things so um the interesting thing is when you look at total distance uh the 311 i actually hit a couple yards farther uh, i hit it about three yards farther uh it was an average of about 10 balls each uh, i tossed out like one or two outliers that were just complete trash shots uh so you know i'm not putting those in there um but distance wise i got the the 0211 was uh, about three yards longer um, and I think a lot of that comes down to the launch. Uh, so the launch on it, um, that was the big difference between these two heads for me. Uh, basically, it was almost two degrees launch difference. So this one was 12.2, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and the 0311 XF was 10.9. So about one and a half, a little bit more than, than that. Uh, well, I guess about 1.3 uh, degrees higher launching this was compared to the 0311, 0311 XF, and again, that's with the exact same shaft, uh, exact same loft heads, all that. So all things considered, this thing launched about, you know, about 1.3, 1.5 degrees higher than the uh, than the 0311. And I'll and I'll tell you what, the, I think it's probably even more than that. It's probably closer to two degrees because the first two shots I hit with the 0311 XF were kind of like, I don't want to call them like, because I don't I don't slice the ball, I don't hit it to the right, but they were kind of like open-faced, started out right, and just stayed there. So they were a little higher launching, higher spinning shots. And I think if I, you know, if I was to de like delete those two shots, that launch angle difference would probably be even greater. Um, <clears throat> it would probably be more like two degrees. But this thing's significant. I mean, even with your eyes, not even using a monitor, this thing just overall, 10 shots, the window was just higher. Uh, it was much easier to get in the air, much higher launching. Um, I'm, I'm kind of shocked it's only that 1.3 or, you know, right around, you know, I guess, yeah, kind of 1.3. I'm kind of shocked that it's that because, like I said, this thing noticeably was uh, was higher launching. Um, it didn't necessarily balloon. It did have kind of a sharper apex at the top. The flight wasn't as boring uh, as the 0311 XF. Um, but, <clears throat> like I said, the three yards added, I think, on this was because of just hitting a little higher. Um the ball speed wise, uh, almost almost identical. Uh, one four five. Um, I was basically half a half a mile an hour different between the two. Um, now I've slowed down quite a bit in my day. Uh, I used to swing it quite a bit faster, but my days now I'm kind of around that 100 to 102 swing speed kind of thing. Uh, and these here, I basically averaged. 145.1 with the 0311, 145.6 with the 0211. So about a half a mile an hour ball speed uh, faster with the 0211. And but the the interesting thing, the smash factor was 0 0.01 different. So 144 with the 0311 XF, 143 with the 0211. Um, but I swung this one about 
one and a half miles an hour faster. The zero two on one, I swung at about one and a half miles an hour faster. So I was at like 102 on full, and I was like 100 on the on the average there. So um, I know with those numbers, you're like, why the hell are you playing an X? But <clears throat> I guess I hit it left. Uh, I did have like a 105, one almost 106 there, there uh, at the beginning of the day, hitting some other clubs as well. So, I mean, it's it's still there sometimes, just not there very often. But I'm not ashamed of it. It is what it is, man. Like it is, I, I like I said, average one, like 100.6 with the 0311 and average 102.1 uh, with the, the 211. So, um, like I said, swung this a little faster. Didn't hit it quite as dead center as I did with the, with the 311. Um, and then the other thing is spin. This thing spun about 100 and not much, I mean, about 140 RPM more. So it launched like two degrees higher, spun about 100, uh, about 150 RPM more. Um, and again, I think that difference would be a little greater if I was to take away those, like I said, those first two shots that were kind of high rights, um, that I typically just don't hit. And, uh, um, I bet that number would be even a little bit higher because when you go through the shots, those two shots are kind of the high twos, and I think one was even 3,000 RPM, um, and then the rest were all, I think I had one that was like 1,900. Uh, all the rest were basically, you know, well under 3,000. So yeah, I had a, a 3,400 uh, and the 3,100, and then everything else was 228, 2,057, 26, 27. A 1962. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, this one on here, I have a couple drives that were uh, were high. Um, where this one here, we're kind of all in the, you know, 29, 29, 3, 24, 22, 25. You know, all kind of that uh, that range. So, overall, you know, like I said, if you were to take those, I think I think the spread would probably be a couple hundred RPM different. Um, but still, like I said, the apex a little bit higher, uh, a little bit sh sharper here. I'd probably get less roll with this. But in Michigan, we play kind of soft conditions, so it's not a huge, huge deal. Um, but overall, like, really close. I mean, it's kind of, I, I was really impressed. I didn't think it would be that close. I thought this would definitely lack uh, a little bit in terms of performance. But if you're somebody who's looking for a, a head that launches a little higher, maybe has a little bit more spin, uh, and still goes really straight, I mean, the 0211 at $220 is is tough to beat like i said the sound and feel on it's really good um you know for the money possibly you'd even be able to toss a an upcharge type shaft in there and still get away with a, a pretty decent deal you know in terms of what they they offer in terms of shafts um you know even if you threw <clears throat> you know this ventus in there you're looking at 520 bucks instead of you know some of the other drivers out there being 800 so for the money it, it, it's a pretty darn good head. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it, it, it's kind of shockingly good. And uh, and like I said, the sound and feel on it was, was super, super solid. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, something that uh, that I was I'm pretty impressed with. And again, a lot of these numbers, too, are, are, are range balls. And I'm not going to lie, the range that I go to, the balls are far from amazing. <laughs> they're really, they're not great. Um you know, there was a there's a couple in there, and I, and I usually try to pull out the worst ones and, and hit wedges with those, just so I don't, you know, I try to save the best ones for drivers and woods. Um, but you can't get around it sometimes, and just you know, some of them are junk. So in terms of those numbers as well, those aren't hitting Pro V ones out there. This is hitting, you know, some you know Wilson or whatever range, you know, two piece range balls. So um, you know, in terms of those numbers, don't go like hardcore, you know, digging into them. Numbers would probably be a little different with, uh, you know, a real premium ball so but overall 211 211 driver i mean for 220 bucks uh you know is is just a, a you know it's a solid deal and and for whatever they're using in terms of titanium all that like it is a pretty high quality the face has got some ball speed to it miss hits stayed really online really well um and like i said it, it's a little bit lighter i definitely need to toss them on the swing weight scale i would maybe think that this one swing weights out a little lighter than the 0311. This one may be coming in at like, you know, a D0 or something like that. Um, but like I said, if you're somebody who, you know, looking to try something new, have a driver that's a little bit older, don't want to spend crazy money, BXG 0211 would be hard to beat. Uh, 220 bucks for a, a stock shaft. And then, like I said, even uh, you toss in one of the, you know, upcharged shafts, you can probably get... Uh, I mean, you get a Diamond S Plus, which is a mid-launch shaft on there. No ch upcharge. You can get a, you know, let's see, what is the, was it 300? You can get a graphite design, you can get a graphite design, a VR, or an HD5 
for 300 bucks. I mean, you're Matora. If you've tossed a Matora X F3 or F1 in here, uh, well, they don't have the F1s. But they have the F3 for 100 bucks. So for 320 dollars, you get a Matora X F3. Maybe you did stiff. I just picked stiff. You get that for 100 bucks more. I mean, or heck, you just go uh, Tensei AV Raw Blue 65. You know. A CK Pro Orange for two hundred bucks, a four nineteen for a CK Pro Orange in this thing. That that shaft alone is like three something. So uh, if you roll into the X, what do they got? Oh, they got a ton of like AV. You got a smoked yellow, uh, AV white, AV raw whites. Um, interesting that AV raw orange is a hundred bucks upcharge, but the AV raw whites are, are standard. Um, but like Aventus Blue, like this build six X, so it's three or five hundred twenty bucks. I mean. That's better than like the 800 that this thing usually is. So I mean, for for 320 or for 520 bucks, you're you're getting a pretty good deal. But yeah, you can get the you know couple graphite designs, stuff like that. Um, there's 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 a few a few decent options in there. So, um, but overall, like I said, zero two one one driver really solid, performed really well, and uh, it's not just a big draw spin machine like I thought it was going to be. It it pretty much went straight, especially if you put it in one of like the flat lower lofted settings um i think it takes a lot of that left out of it and uh it was it was pretty darn good i was i was pretty impressed i hit some uh, some pretty good drives with it so uh, it'll be exciting to get that uh on the course uh, a little more i didn't think it was really going to be a club that i took it on the course but it ended you know up being something pretty darn solid um said so also uh i had they they you know fortunately like i said sent me the same kind of setup i had in my 0311 XF. So when I went out there, which was the original fit was into a five wood that was turned down uh, to kind of a four wood style. And then a seven wood again, turned down uh, and flat. Both of those turned down and flat. The five wood didn't end up making my baggage. It didn't quite go far enough uh, as my three wood. So hitting it off the tee, stuff like that, I felt like it was a little short. Uh, so that kind of went away. I, I ended up giving it to one of the guys at the office and I haven't seen it since. <clears throat> so this one here, I, uh, of course, took the 0211 7 wood out. So the 7 wood I have, uh, you know, the 0311, and then here is the 0211. So big difference between the two. Uh, one, the 0211s do not have... Um, do not have carbon fiber crowns. There, it's just a again that same kind of satin black crown, and then it also does not have an adjustable hosel. So this is a glued hosel uh, on there. So whatever you get, you know, the seven wood here is twenty one degrees. That's just what it is. Um, and this one here, uh, that is a a little bit of a bummer because, like I said, to kind of fit my gapping, I think turning it down uh, down one. Now on here it does say twenty one degrees and. The 0311XF is a 22 turned down, so they're both technically 21. Um, but I do have a different shaft in that 7 wood, and unfortunately, the same shaft that's in here, this Diamana S Plus 70, um, I pulled out of the adapter to put another shaft in, so <clears throat> I have the shaft, but I wasn't able to hit, you know, shaft, uh, exact shafts. And without this one being adjustable, I couldn't just pop the shaft out and, and swap them. So, unfortunately, not exactly a, uh, a, a apples to apples uh, comparison. This one again, too, extremely cheap. I didn't actually actually know how cheap it was until I am recording this today. And this thing is $169 with the Diamana S plus 70 stock. Well, let's make sure that's correct. But um, can you get a 70? Yep, S plus 70 stiff. No upcharge. $170 for a 7 wood. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, I didn't know it was that cheap. Uh, the one thing I do have to say, again, uh, that I've loved about the PXG 7 Woods, and not every 7 Wood has been this way, is that when you set it down, it doesn't look like it's crazy closed. Now, this does look like a little bit more closed compared to my 0311 XF because it doesn't have the adjustable hosel, so I can't take loft off of it and make it flat, so it, it, it does look a little more shut. But the way they painted the top line, it really... I mean, the, the face score lines kind of look a bit shut. The top line paint line actually looks dead square, if not a little bit open. So when you set it down, it, it looks pretty good. And like I've said, a lot of seven woods, I just don't love the look because they look shut. I think I'm going to hit them left. Um, this one here definitely looks pretty good, especially for a glued hosel. Because I thought glued hosel, it's going to look five degrees closed, and I'm just I'm not going to like it. I'll hit it for the show, but I'm, I'm going to hate it. Um, like the driver, uh, 
sound and feel really good. Uh, like I said, I almost probably prefer the 211 sound over the 311. Uh, it just, like I said, a l same thing, a little more muted, a little less metallic. It still has the, the ting to it because it does have the, um, I think it's like a carpenter steel or margining steel face on it. So it's like a high quality steel, fast ball speeds off the face. It still has more ting to it than, like, say, the driver, but it's not as high pitched as the 0311 to my ear. Um, and the kind of same thing, like when you hit it, it's pretty responsive. Again, I feel like the 311, you can really feel the ball kind of compress off the face and go. This one here, you lose a little bit of that. Um, I, again, I don't think that's a huge, huge deal. I mean, if you're a real true feel player, all that, then maybe you might have a little bit of a problem with it. Uh, but for I think for most players, you know, it, it's not that big of a deal. Again, no adjustable hosels, no adjustable weights. Like the driver, it kind of has these kind of pads molded into it, you know, cast into it that I think they're moving a lot of weight to the perimeter on, um, you know, no movable weights. And, th and that is one thing with mine. Again, the 0311, I've got the really heavy weight out in the toe and at the back. So, and it's set minus one flat. I mean, it's set up to be about as fade machine as you could be. And uh, this one here doesn't quite have that same, uh, same thing. So this one, I noticed a little more left with it. Uh, not a ton. It wasn't anything I was like scared of, uh, but I did notice that Shots with this thing did, in, in terms of dispersion, looking, you know, at, at, when you look at the full swing, it, it definitely had more landing on the left. And they all started a little bit more left as well. Uh, but again, for a player who, you know, plays a fade, anything like that, this may be pretty good. You may have be able to, <clears throat> to hit this a little bit straighter than, say, well, I mean, the 0311, you might be able to set it up, you know, more draw. But for me, this thing here, you, you are able to turn it over and square it up. Again, this one here, it definitely feels lighter, but it is. The shaft that I have in uh, in my 7 wood is a Nippon Reggio Formula MB+, Plus, which is like, it's a 75X, but it like weighs in at like 80 grams or 79 grams. <clears throat> this is that Diamante S plus 70, uh, so a little bit lighter, and it's the stiff flex, so it's a little bit softer. Um, so all those things there, it's it, like I said, not a complete apples to apples uh, comparison, but, you know, it, it did... Uh, you know, it, it's enough where we can get out on the course and, and try them out. But this thing was super easy. Uh, definitely launches higher. Um, this one here was basically, again, about one and a half uh, degrees launch higher. Uh, this thing here launched at 15.2, where the 0311 XF launched at 13.6. And, again, a lot of that has to do with it's got a little lower launching, heavier, stiffer shaft in it uh, compared to this one. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing, though, is that in terms of miles per hour, I swung the other one like two degrees or excuse me, two miles an hour faster. So I was like 93 uh, with the uh, 0311 and only 91 and a half with the 211. So I was like a mile an hour faster with the with the heavier one, which was interesting. But part of that too, it's more comfortable. I've been playing that one all year and or, you know, for most of the year. It's just something I'm comfortable with. This is brand new, so I'll, I'll chalk it up to that. Um, but the smash factor on them was pretty close. The 0311, I was at 139. This one here, I was 140. And I hit it pretty close to center. I was a little out on the toe, a little high on the face. Not anything too bad. Um, and then this one here, in terms of ball speed, the 0311 was about 1.5 miles an hour faster at 129.7 compared to 128.3. <clears throat> so a little bit faster. Uh, Distance-wise, my 0311 was about five yards longer, and again, probably because it comes out a little flatter, uh, and it also spins a little less. It's about 200 RPM uh, different between the two, uh, and again, that's with kind of a different shaft in it as well. But you're looking at 4130 4, RPMs for the 0311 XF Gamer, and this one here came in at 4325. So, um, and again, that's an average of about 10 balls uh, with each one. <clears throat> but this one here did, uh, like I said, launch substantially higher at, at 15.2 as opposed to 13.6. So um, now both of them here is funny because I, I didn't hit them very far. Like the first couple shots I hit, and there's like a 200-yard marker out there. And the first shot I think I hit with this, it dropped way before it. And I think it came up at like 175 or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? But neither, neither one, I mean, I was hitting crazy far. And I just don't know if it was a ball or what. Because on the course, that XF, I mean, it's a, I mean... I can hit it 210, and out there I'm like literally like 30 yards shorter. So it was pretty interesting, but again, this uh, this one here is about five yards shorter, and, you know, it just went straight up in the air. Um, it was super easy to launch. If you're somebody who needs as much launch as possible out of a 7-wood, 
this thing here jumps in the air super super easy uh it, it, it and it goes pretty straight like i said it'll start you know for me it started off just a little bit left i kind of hit everything left um it didn't have a crazy amount of draw to it it was just kind of straight left it was just left to target where my seven would unless i came over the top and had the face shut it was you know pretty much dead straight <clears throat> this one here had a little bit of draw and a little bit of uh uh, left starting line to it again though i think you know for 169 bucks which is just kind of crazy cheap it performs really really well um i didn't take the five wood out only because i didn't have the other five wood to, to uh to put it up against um so i just took the seven wood and the driver but like i said both of these really really close and, and honestly for 169 bucks for a fairway wood um it's tough to <laughs> it's tough to argue and say that uh you know they're not great like i said this exact setup is 169 bucks um if you went to uh, x uh like x flex um now they don't have any 80 well they do have an 80 gram shaft in a, in a ck pro white uh but it's at 80 tx uh so that's that's a big boy um but they do have like a, a gp8 x um you know so they have a few uh, uh just a couple heavy options uh, out there but a bunch of 70 gram stuff uh in x um, and a bunch of 70 gram stuff in stiff as well so if you're looking for a seven wood and you want to try one and you're like man i really don't want to break the bank i don't even know if i like it whatever 169 bucks uh it's it's tough to beat <laughs> that uh to try out a seven wood uh, but the zero two one one so i do to say like this year's stuff uh, I know previously some of the stuff has looked kind of cheap, whatever. Now, yes, it doesn't look as high quality because it doesn't have the <clears throat> the movable weights on the sole and the carbon fiber top and all that stuff. Yes, it doesn't look quite as nice in terms of crazy high quality, but at 220 or 169 bucks, uh, you're getting a pretty darn good club. So <laughs> in terms of performance, you're going to get performance out of it. So um, like I said, if you wanted to try a, a PXG a club or you wanted to try a 7 wood, something like that, uh, I don't know where you could find a current generation, current model club um, at that price at 170 bucks. So, and like I said, driver 220. I mean, it's almost like at that price you could just put a second driver in the bag, build it up different. You know, go high launch with like a low spin shaft or something, or you know, go super low launch if you have a higher launch driver at home. I mean, whatever you could kind of experiment a little bit and tinker and not uh, not 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 break the bank or kill it. But the this seven wood, like I said, super easy to get in the air, super high. Um, like I said, just not quite as long as, uh, um, as my, as my gamer, but again, it's a different shaft and all that. So, um, but this thing here, uh, like I said, pretty impressed with the zero two one one stuff. I, uh, like I said, didn't think it was going to be that good. I kind of, when I got them in, I kind of like opened the box and said, all right, let's go hit them. And then we'll kind of just kind of go from there and say heck with it. But, uh, they ended up being, uh, being pretty darn good. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say this show here. I've probably gone long enough, uh, so I'm going to uh, hold on to the the VA Composites Regine till next week. I'm going to bust those out first, probably. Um, they're really good. The Regine 2.0s, they're really solid. Um, if you haven't messed with, uh, um, if you haven't messed with uh, any of the VA Composite stuff, it, it definitely uh, uh, is really good. So. Anyway, um, that is the 211 stuff from PXG, the 2022 211 uh, stuff. So, uh, like I said, check it out. If you go to pxg.com, uh, you can go on there. You can check it out, order it, whatever. But uh, it, it ended up being really solid. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, like I said, where I'm going to end it today. I want to say thank you for everybody uh, for doing the Q&A yesterday. I got a ton of questions. I know I didn't do my usual, like, recording my face, all that. Uh, I was kind of hitting balls at the range. I was entertaining a three-year-old i was just you know making her dinner all that so i was answering them just uh, text only so i know it's a little more fun sometimes when i get on there and actually talk about stuff but it was just uh, a little tough today so anyway if you want to see uh if you want to follow along uh at club junkie pod uh, on instagram is where i do the q a every uh every week um, or at least i try every week i i've missed some weeks in the past i'll admit it but uh, follow me on there. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, hit me up with a DM on there as well. That's probably the best place to get a hold of me. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good rest of the week. I am, uh, yeah, going to hopefully play some golf today. And then uh, I'm going to rake some leaves and maybe try to golf this weekend as well. So uh, we'll see what the weather looks like, what the tee time situation looks like. I know here in Michigan when it gets nice, like they're tough to get. Um, my, you know, my Spartans season's pretty much done. Lion season pretty much shot. So... I don't really have to hang around on Sundays and Saturdays to watch football. I can go play golf. So, again, hopefully you guys have a good one. Hit some clubs, and uh, we'll talk next week.